Hi my YouTube family, this is Melody from Home Garden and Fashion. I thank you so so much for being here today. Today we are going to have a wonderful time together. Hi, this is Melody. Today I am going to show you how to make a sweet treat. And these are going to be rice dumpling and to that I'm going to give some filling and this filling is made with coconut coconut is uh, almost like powdered coconut it's not totally powdered it's just tiny little flakes so this uh, unsweetened coconut flakes with uh, the organic molasses is called gur so organic brown sugar cane mix i did a video and i'm going to add that video to this so you can see how this one is made now this could be eaten by itself on top of the bread like a spread so this is a spread made out of coconut and organic molasses slash gold slash pure brown sugar cane and this is very nutritious so this one you can use as a sandwich spread which is a sweet treat or you can just use it make a ball like a sweet candy you can add any nuts or raisins to it but i'm going to use this one as a filling for my sweet rice dumpling now this is made out of lentils so this is uh, uh, chickpea lentils and this is called chana dal and this one I boiled it with some salt, turmeric, some pepper and some spices like vegetable masala and roasted grounded cumin seeds and some chili peppers. So this one like a spicy taste and this one is going to be a filling too. So we're going to use, um, in India when we make this called pita, this dumpling and there is a celebration during the winter time and that is a dumpling eating celebration and in our home usually there are um, seven eight different varieties of dumplings are made and all over the neighborhood in people's houses dumplings made and everybody share with each other and there are tons of recipes on this how to make all different kinds but i'm going to make this just this two kinds so i'll show you so these are really good healthy sweet treats and this is this this is rice flour and this rice flour you can buy it powder rice flour or you can grind it yourself to this one you have to add very hot water so you have to add the water as much as needed as you make a dough for your bread so you don't want to add too much so you add little at a time so we're just going to mix it you you once it gets a little bit little bit cooler then you can touch it with your hand but right now we're just going to use this spatula you have to use something this gets very hot and the reason we are adding this hot water it keeps the rice soft otherwise rice gets very hard if you add cold water it's going to be very hard we have to add hot boiling water boil the water and then add it Sorry about the bugs. Add it down thing. Hope it doesn't get too soggy. Just going to mix it and then I mean while it's hot you have to add your hand in it anyway, but it's going to mix a little bit with it.
see how hot it is. It's pretty hot. It's very hot, but you have to handle it hotter. I'm thinking I might have to add a little bit more water to it. So, as you can see, I'm kneading this dough. So you have to knead it so that it gets soft. Since I added boiling hot water, the dough is very soft, so never add cold water to the dough or the whatever you're making is going to be hard. Add boiling hot water. So now I'm going to make those dumplings. I have some dry this rice powder to, to add in case I need it. So you can give whatever shape you want, you know, there is no requirement. You can make this little, little balls. So, like this. This dough is very perfect right now. It's hot, it's sort of like warm, and good thing I did not add any more water. Water finished, otherwise it would have been more. Too much water is not good. So now we make a bowl like this and put enough, but not too much. You know, but since this is tasty treat, people kind of like it too much. I'm gonna give different different shape, okay? My grandma used to make and she gave all different shape and we keep looking for this sweet one and there was to be a lot of sweet one like she used to make a really creamy cottage cheese one uh, this was like a sweet paneer or called kheer and she used to make the kheer one, make very thick kheer and put inside the dumpling. And this is the coconut one. Coconut one also is to love a lot. And then she used to make uh, lentils. And I love the lentils one because I love the spicy one. So I have the lentils here too. I'm going to add the lentils. So we're going to add some lentils like this from inside. And lentils one. Oh, I think I added too much lentils. If you add too much stuffing, it's going to come out. So, but when you have too much stuffing, it does taste good. If there's a very little stuffing, it doesn't taste good. So lentils one, I'm going to make it like a round, so you know the difference. You know? And the coconut, I have two stuffings. If I had more stuffing, I could have added like all different shapes and sizes. Back home when they do uh, this celebration, and it's called Po Songkranti, and that um, they make this dumpling, and these dumplings, uh, are called pita and they make with all varieties of things stuffing inside so they have this uh, kheer um, which is like very sweet cottage cheese and then they have 
the spicy chana dal and then they have the um, sesame seed uh, these are kind of like sesame seed patties and the sesame seed patties has sugar in it so they make those sesame seed patties mm, they add it inside this and that also is to like the sesame seed little little ball and there was to be sugary so this is actually sweet dumpling you know it, it's a lot of sweets inside so i try to make this thing with the um, organic um, sugar cane and kind of like a molasses I try to make it with that I don't like to add sugar so it's like pure brown sugar and then when you make the pure brown sugar it comes like a big ball a big chunk and you have to melt it and after I melt it then I strain in a thick cheesecloth like double line cheesecloth and when I strain it I really see a lot of a uh, lot of metal things like that comes because it comes from the ground so this one is a weird shape but yeah we're just trying to give all kinds of and we used to like all the family members and all the neighbors whoever came up and my grandma everybody would sit and then there will be like in the household all the women there the grown up women children would just come and eat up the stuffing but all the grown up women they will just sit down and this will happen right after the lunch and the lunch would finish like around two and then around evening four o'clock the three around three four o'clock all the women will start making this and this would take long process like three or nine ten o'clock everybody used to be exhausted because they were so tired sitting down and making and they used to sit down on the floor to make it and this uh, used to be made in big big huge gigantic pots containers vessels whatever you call it and and it was huge it used to make some 200 300 probably this for the whole family and neighborhood and everybody and the next day the actual day of Sankranti, Makar Sankranti, the next day, nobody ate anything. This was the thing the night before it was made and it was kept in the kitchen. They didn't keep it in the fridge or anything. And, and it used to be in winter, so yeah, it used to be cold because they really don't have heat or anything. So things stay good in winter and cold. So next day, uh, these things they will heat up a big um, big pan huge big pan and to that they will put some oil and then some like chili pepper cumin seed and roast it and then put this dumpling and make it fried a little bit and then it was so tasty and we ate that only the whole day all kinds of dumplings the dumpling eating ceremony and dumpling eating day so that's how we develop our love with dumpling because it wasn't the dumpling it was this, this family get together and the dumpling and we used to sit down in the sun to eat dumpling. Sun was the center of everything. Back home when the children were little, uh, sun was very important. So when somebody had a baby, they would, uh, there were the special people would come and take that tiny little baby on their lap and then they will have a fireplace next to it and they will sit next to the fireplace with the tiny little baby on their lap, on the legs, they would put it 
and then they would massage with warm oil and massage the hand and leg and the mother and baby would sit almost four or five hours in the hot sun in the daytime and they said this was very beneficial for the new mother for her body to heal because sun is the ultimate source of energy and it heals everything it cures all the diseases heals everything so they will just sit in the sun and they will keep the little newborn baby in the sun in mother's lap and then the babies were babies grew up laying in the sun four or five hours daily solid sunlight and then these babies when they grew up like as we were children, when we grew up, we used to get up from the tree and jump. We were in our house on the roof. There used to be big, big water tank. Water tank used to be huge. And the roof used to be all concrete. There was no carpet. And it was like third floor, fourth floor roof. And when moms were busy cooking housework taking care of other kids we the older kids used to go on the roof and we would jump from that water tank to the roof and the water tank used to be very high and the filled with water and we fell down hundreds of times there were no broken bone nothing because as a child we spend most of our time in the sun there was no sunscreen nothing we didn't even know what was sunscreen what the heck is sunscreen we did not know only thing we knew is they used to do mustard oil with uh, um, garlic clove mix they used to heat up garlic clove with mustard oil until the garlic cloves were totally burned and brown and then they used to strain out that oil and that oil they used to massage every kid and then let the kid lay down in the sun, play in the sun all day. The sun was the ultimate source of energy. So we used to sit in the sun and eat this pita and it was so amazing to just sit in the sun and eat pita. So my this much is made and I'm gonna go put on that um, boiling water i will show you how to do it so i can take you there and see. it's all tied up on the top and you can do the same thing if you have a steamer if you have a steamer it will be great but i just created my diy steamer so now i'm going to place all my dumplings on top of this cloth water is at the bottom so the cloth is on top and you give enough water so that the container doesn't get burned, but at the same time water should not come up. So I'm going to add some of it. All may not fill in, but just some. I don't want to overcrowd it. This is the last one. So now I'm going to cover it. So I covered it. Now this will cook for 20 minutes or so. So here the dumplings, some of them are done. So I'm going to cool it and they will taste really good. So when they are done, they have a special texture. You can see it doesn't look so white white rice. It looks a little bit beige color when they're done. And they're very tasty and they're usually done in 20 minutes. I get them 20 minutes. So yeah, just make some and enjoy. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and share. And I will see you with many, many more. Hi, thank you so, so much for being here today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and share this video. Thank you. May God bless you all.